I'm Dr. Dennis L. Russo, uh, surgical oncologist, fellowship trained in surgical oncology at MD Anderson, and I'm here to talk to you today about breast cancer identification, screening, and treatment with you. So breast cancer screening is an, a large area of controversy, and you will find that there are many different recommendations from all of the appropriate societies. The key to finding the best surveillance plan for each individual patient is understanding what each individual risk is. There are risk calculators online where you can put in your information, and they can predict for you if you are average risk or if you are above average risk. For the average risk woman, mammography should start at the age of 40 to 45, and it should be done yearly or every other year. And the differences between which you choose at the exact age and how often is something that you evaluate with your primary physician and with your overall cancer risk and with your family history. There are very few behavioral modifications you can do that will markedly change your risk for breast cancer. Genetic risks pretty much trump everything. And so if there is an extensive history of breast cancer in the family, you would be a candidate for genetic testing. And the cost of genetic testing has now gotten to a level where it can be offered to the majority of women. Any woman who's diagnosed with breast cancer age 65 or younger, any type, is now eligible for genetic testing. And so if you've had breast cancer in the past and have not had genetic testing, you should go and talk to your physician about having that done. The best person to test for genetics is a person who is affected by cancer because if their test is negative, then it's not something that could be passed on to their children or shared with their siblings. So breast cancer is what we call a multidisciplinary cancer, meaning there are multiple doctors involved in care. And so the first step in the process once you've been diagnosed is to assemble your care team. The care team will generally consist of a medical oncologist who will handle the chemotherapy aspects of breast cancer, a surgeon who will take care of the surgical aspects, and a radiation oncologist who will perform radiation therapy if that is necessary. You'll meet with each of these physicians. They will evaluate your cancer, and based on pathology results and the subtyping of your cancer, they will determine if chemotherapy is necessary, and if it is, should it be the first treatment. You'll meet with your surgeon, who will determine the types of surgical options that you have, and you'll meet with your radiation oncologist if radiation will be indicated. The general treatment sequence is surgery first if it's an early stage cancer, followed by chemotherapy if necessary, then followed by radiation if necessary. If it's an advanced stage or more aggressive cancer, we usually will start with chemotherapy, then you would go to surgery, and then you would go to radiation if necessary. When you meet with your medical oncologist based on your cancer type, there are generally three forms of treatment that medical oncologists offer for breast cancer. The first is the standard chemotherapy. The second type of treatment is what we call endocrine therapy or hormone therapy. About 70 to 75% of breast cancers are sensitive to female hormones, and we have anti-hormonal therapy, generally in the form of a pill, that will be recommended to you that you would take once a day for five years. The third type of therapy that's available is what we call targeted therapy. You may need one, or you may need all three, or any combination of the above, and this is the discussion that your medical oncologist will have with you. When you discuss surgery, surgery for breast cancer has to accomplish two things. I have to remove, or we have to remove, the tumor from the breast, and there's two ways to do that, and we have to assess the lymph nodes underneath the arm. For the lymph nodes, we do the lymph nodes the same way no matter what treatment we offer the breast. Underneath your arm, there are 15 to 30 lymph nodes. Two of them are directly connected to the breast. We have a technique where we can identify just those two specific lymph nodes and only remove them and leave the rest of the lymph nodes in place. And that allows us to avoid removal of the majority of the lymph nodes, which causes significant morbidity and problems for the arm. If it's necessary, we remove the other lymph nodes, but in many cases, it is not. For the breast, there are two options. There is option one, which we call breast conservation surgery, which is the same as lumpectomy, partial mastectomy, or wide local excision. And that basically involves just removing the tumor and a surrounding area of breast tissue, leaving the rest of the breast intact. And this is where the majority of patients who require radiation will need radiation. If we save the breast, 
They will almost always recommend radiation therapy to the breast after surgery to decrease the chance of a recurrence. The other surgical option is mastectomy, which is a complete removal of the entire breast. That is always offered with the option for immediate reconstruction. And if that is chosen, plastic surgery would be involved. And all reconstruction is covered by insurance. It is not considered aesthetic. And so if that is the appropriate decision for you with your surgeon, we would arrange for plastic surgery evaluation so the reconstruction can be started at the time of your definitive surgery. The advantage of mastectomy is that you won't need a mammogram ever again on that side and you don't need radiation. From a survival standpoint, both options are equal. More surgery doesn't make a better outcome. Some patients are better treated with lumpectomy, some with mastectomy, some it's personal preference. Your surgeon will offer you all of the appropriate options and help you come to the right one for you. When a patient is identified as a high-risk patient, and by high risk, we'll define it as having a genetic mutation that predisposes for breast cancer or having a lifetime calculated risk based on risk calculators you can find on the internet that puts them above a 20% chance lifetime of developing breast cancer. Preventative surgery or prophylactic surgery can be considered. That surgery is generally bilateral prophylactic mastectomy with immediate reconstruction. We do nipple and skin sparing techniques so that the entire envelope of skin and nipple covering the breast are left intact and plastic surgery does the reconstruction at the same time as the mastectomies. This is the best risk reduction we can do for breast cancer and it's successful about 90 to 95% of the time at reducing risk. It is not 100%. All of the breast tissue on a mastectomy is not removed at the time of surgery or the skin would not survive. And so while there's a small risk, that risk is the minimum it can possibly be for the individual patient who is high risk.